Resident Evil, a series that is known by many people around the world. Whether you call it by its original name, Biohazard. There is always a favorite staple or game in the series that stands out to many people with Resident Evil franchise as a whole. And with that said, everyone has a favorite and least favorite game in the series. For me, or a game might consider underrated or underappreciated. This is the review of, for me, one of those specific titles that I consider underrated. In total, there are specifically two Resident Evil games that stand out for me personally. As I think, really criminally underrated and deserve a lot more love than they get. So with that said... Last year, I reviewed Resident Evil 2 for Halloween theme month, and my review for the movie Resident Evil Apocalypse will be coming over the next five to seven days, so stay tuned for that. So with that said, we're going to talk today about my second favorite game in the Resident Evil series. I first originally played the game back years ago. Originally first on the Sega Dreamcast, which if you've watched my channel for a while, you know the Dreamcast is my personal favorite game console of all time. And needing no introduction, this was the first Resident Evil game, and unfortunately the only Resident Evil game I've actually ever had on the Dreamcast, as I could never find for a reasonable price range two or three for Dreamcast, which sucks. But, with that said, for me, this game is special. This was the version I played the most, though I have played actually three versions. One of the three I unfortunately do not currently have. The two versions I know best are, one of course the re-release known as Resident Evil Code Veronica on the PS2 as well as GameCube. But I will always remember best the Dreamcast version, just Veronica. Now, a quick little state on uh, my opinions of the game. Fun little fact originally, this was actually going to be Resident Evil 3, because this was going to be the next mainline title in the series, but due to, at the time period, there was a contract between Sony and Capcom, and it stated that all mainline titles of the Resident Evil franchise would be exclusively at the time released on, well, obviously, anything that got released on the PS1 at the time had to be a mainline number, which is why originally a game that was going to be called just Resident Evil Nemesis would become known as Resident Evil 3 Nemesis for the PS1, though we'd later get, of course, a port to the GameCube as well as the Dreamcast, funny enough. But that is the reason why this game goes by the name Code Veronica. Because of the uh, time contract between Sony and Capcom. So that is the first little piece of info to know about this game. Second thing to know about the game, I personally like it quite a bit. It was, in my opinion, the last true 100% old school Resident Evil game. As it used the uh, classic fixed camera angles... Though I think some angles here and there would make it a bit better in Coveronica. And of course the classic uh, tank controls, which is something for me personally. Holds a real nostalgia factor for me given, you know, this was the era I grew up and was getting into survival horror. Was the specifically late 90s, early 2000s. Was the golden age for me personally in survival horror as I grew up playing the original classic Resident Evil, or rather Resident Evil Director's Cut on the PS1, as well as Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and then this, in my opinion, is the last true original Resident Evil. Resident Evil 4, yes, still has very much the feel and stuff of a horror game, but it's definitely much more action-oriented, given you can actually do, like, kicks and stuff, Plus, this would be the last game, at least for a long time, that 
you would not have to worry about disgusting, stupid, quick time events, which is something one of my biggest pet peeves with Resident Evil 4 is the quick time events I despise and with a passion. I know games like God of War made it huge and big. As for me personally, I will always defend this game. For one, also, this is arguably, in my opinion, in the top three best Resident Evil game soundtracks of all time. For me personally, now the music I choose today is strictly the safe room music from Coveronica, which is some of my favorite safe room music out of the franchise. Obviously, it was somewhat influenced by other games of the past. Specific, a little bit more so of Resident Evil 2. Which makes sense, as the two main characters you play as in protagonists in this game are, of course, Claire Redfield from Resident Evil 2, and, of course, Chris Redfield, which becomes really more or less the rival face of the franchise along with Leon Kennedy. Though, uh, as time has gone on, Chris has become a real big, somewhat douchebag, especially after, you know, the things he did in Village and stuff. I question stuff. This is Chris, though, before he became stupid, over-the-top, boulder like Punch Man from Resident Evil 5. So, this is still classic style Chris Redfield, with a little bit more edge to the character, but not too much. So, I actually appreciate that. Um, character interactions and stuff I like, as uh, this game starts off, of course you get a cool cutscene which actually goes in, actually makes sense 100% with how things start off in the actual game in Kovaranka. One thing you will learn in this game specifically, one, you definitely see quite an upgrade in the graphics department, from like uh, Resident Evil 2 and 3 to Resident Evil Kovaranka, though then again, Looking at the hardware upgrade as well, keep in mind, as this was the first Resident Evil game released for the 6th console generation, being on Dreamcast later than on, of course, PS2, as well as GameCube. Now, for me, other than the music, and I really like the characters, the graphical upgrades, and I think some of the fixed camera angles are definitely better in this game, like I said. I do like the tank controls in the game, that's always been sort of the appeal for me of a lot of the classic style survival horror games of the time period. To each their own, I guess you could say. Some of us who grew up with stuff like that, uh, games like Alone in the Dark, classic Silent Hill, as well as games like Siren or uh, Fatal Frame, and many other classics. Also, games like uh, Echo is quite an interesting game. Also, you have interesting games out there like Clock Tower and many others. Uh, but one thing about this game is I do like at least it is really the last true game where the main villain, the big baddie, is Umbrella. Um, of course, you end up basically least released or whether Claire gets released by a guy in prison, which you have to end up finding medicine and stuff to help him. You will come across a crashed helicopter, like we didn't see that before in RE2. But you have things in it, and I actually appreciate it, and I do find it interesting and different. For the most part, I actually appreciate quite a bit, definitely, certain elements and things. But, um, story-wise, also, of course, you see, uh, obviously, a certain someone reappears in this game, obviously, being Wesker. Which, this is when he starts becoming more like the Wesker we know, you know, with the, like, wearing black sunglasses and stuff. That's more the Wesker we know today. And a lot of elements of a fight scene, or scene at the end of the game involving also Chris and Claire, would actually be re imagines in Resident Evil Afterlife film, interestingly enough. Now, with that said, overall, the game is good. Yeah, there are definitely issues with the game here and there, and there's one specific issue with one side character in the game. I don't hate him as much as some people, but I still dislike the character quite a bit, which, of course, um, obviously, he gets a little thing for uh, Claire Redfield, 
in the game and stuff, but he is quite an emo kid, to say the least. His dialogue is pretty cringeworthy, to say the least. Um, also, one thing I will say about also the character, he was obviously heavily influenced by, at the time, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. You can tell by his hairstyle and design and stuff, very similar to that of the character from Titanic, weirdly enough. Which is very interesting. Uh, but also with the game, I do like some of the newer creatures. We do see uh, a, a new creature in a place of, like, hunters, which can have stretch arms, stretch out and, like, whack you and stuff, which they can be quite a pain to fight against. Also, you have giant worms that pop out of the ground, which kind of remind me of the giant worms you have to fight in a boss fight in Parasite Eve, interestingly enough. And... Both games came out, like, within about a year and a half of each other. But definitely, it's an interesting... Definitely some of the new creatures. You do have your classic zombies. Rawr, from, obviously, of course, head nods to uh, classic films of back in the day, like... Obviously, films like uh, Dawn of the Dead and many other classics. But, also, you have other interesting creatures. Of course, you have, like, poisonous, like, moss, tarantulas, again... You have, obviously, like, weird underwater creature, like a stingray sort of creature that can electrocute everything. Uh, you also have other creatures you come across. Of course, you have your classic Dobermans as well in this game. And you have some interesting boss creatures you have to find in the game. And boy, can they be a pain to fight against. And then, of course, you have the big baddie of the game, really. Uh, which you find out first you chase after this psychopath uh, guy with a sniper rifle you chase after for a good chunk at first with Claire. Um, you end up finding out oh, he is actually the grandson of the original, one of the original, of course, true founders of the Umbrella Corporation. You learn, of course, obviously, more stuff on, like, obviously, the T-Virus, the G-Virus, and other viruses. Which will come to actually play things and elements in future installments, such as Resident Evil 4, as well as Resident Evil 5. And even into Resident Evil 7. People don't realize the real story importance of Co Veronica. Gameplay is pretty much the same as always. You have some interesting... Like, new weapons, though, you have in the game. And I actually appreciate that. Overall, though, it's not the greatest Resident Evil game, but like I said, maybe it's because nostalgia factor involved heavily for this game for me, personally. And given I've played and probably beat this game eight or nine times, quite a few, um, I do have a real soft spot for the game. Overall, if I was to grade it, on the regular grading system, honestly, I give Veronica X or Co Veronica personally probably an A minus grade because of nostalgia, and I have a lot of great memories playing the game with also my longtime best friend, as he was the one who actually got me into Resident Evil series, and in turn, I got him into other games such as Silent Hill and Parasite Eve. So, we got each other into horror games. Uh, he would also really start my interest into RPGs, which I actually appreciate quite a bit. But I played some stuff prior. So, that is the great thing about having a long time, like, a good friend, is introducing you or introducing them to specific games or franchises and stuff. That is one cool thing. Especially when you share common interests and stuff like RPGs, as well as like Resident Evil or in general survival horror as a whole, it's a great thing. But with that said, like I said, it's an A minus grade overall. I, overall, I get the soundtrack probably uh, a flat A to an A plus. I really like it honestly. Resident Evil 2 soundtrack though holds such a high esteem. Now, that's one of the things I didn't like maybe quite as much about Resident Evil 4. I didn't think some of the music was as good as prior games. 
but still overall solid. But with that said, that is it for a sort of a trip down memory lane and some of my opinions on the game. But I do like the big final boss battle of the game where the main uh, antagonist you're chasing at first ends up uh, waking up his twin sister. And yeah, they are complete psychos in that case. Is, and of course you learn that Wesker has a different vendetta from obviously her in the story. But it is fun playing and also playing the mercenaries mode is what really one of the key pieces I really love about this game. But with that said, I'll see y'all next time. Have a good rest of October and have a happy and safe Halloween. I'll see you soon enough for my review of Resident Evil Apocalypse film. See you again soon enough.